good. A little bit of an oil leak. See how much it's down and where it's coming from. the uh, playa dust really makes it easy to see so it's over here on this side those oil pan bolts were kind of loose and when I tightened them I saw oil squeeze out between the gasket so I'm gonna guess that that's what it is I, I can't believe it didn't, leak, it didn't leak a drip at Burning Man so just the vibrations the oil dipstick says it's down less than two quarts This is not a pickup truck. Um, it says it's down less than two quarts, and the bus is where I'm parked at here. It's listing to the right, and the dipstick tube is all the way over on the left. So, really, it's only down about a quart, which I mean, it's a hell of a mess under here. But uh, yeah, the playa dust makes it see you can see where it came from there. And then it was the wind looks like maybe it was blowing it back to this cross number here. So, anyways, I'll find out, but. This is something new. <laughs> uh, we're about 300 miles into it today, so uh, quart, maybe a quart, quart and a half. There is a drip up on the blower. You can see it on that, the last bolt on the blower. I can't get to it. There it is up there. I'm gonna try and tighten that and make sure that's tight too. My fan is a little loose. And spin it on the belt. So I'm just gonna give it a little bit of a tighten on it. So I was running a little bit warm today. Uh, it's like 96, 97 degrees outside. Um, on flat ground at like 70 miles an hour, I was running like 195. And I knew it was a little hotter than it should have been. I slowed down to like 62, uh, and I couldn't get it to really drop below 190, and that's not normal. So we pulled off here at the rest stop. Um, I uh, let the engine cool down for a little bit. I didn't want to touch it when it was hot. Uh, we turned the air on with the generator for a little bit and cooled off. Uh, and then went back and looked behind the bus and saw that huge oil puddle back there, which that was brand new. We've never had a leak like that since a long time. Um, obviously it wasn't leaking like that at Burning Man or there'd been oil all over the playa. Uh, that ended up just being the oil pan bolts. Uh, when we had the oil pan off to, for the piston, um, they just weren't super tight. We, uh, we reused that oil pan gasket, which was quart, it's a quart gasket. Um, so anyways, I got uh, nearly a full revolution on like six in a row there where it was really bad. I got flies in here now. Um, and then uh, the, the cooling issue was the fan was just loose. So when I turned the, uh, the fan would move by itself, uh, you know, the, the tension on the belt, and you shouldn't be able to move it like that that easily. Uh, so I got two revolutions on the adjusting. There's an adjuster on there, so I, if you loosen, there's a plate that holds it down, and if you loosen that plate, and then there's an adjusting tensioner, and I put two revolutions on the tensioner, and now it's nice and snug. Um, so that should fix our problem. We're gonna get back on the road here in a minute. Uh, I put a quart and a half of oil in it, and uh, it's just below the full line, but again, I'm leaning to the right. Uh, so if I was on level, level ground, that should be full. So it looks like we lost uh, about a quart and a half of oil. We stopped at a Walmart this morning uh, after 100 miles, and there was no puddle like that under it. So that that really happened after, you know, somewhere in the last 200 miles. So, anyways, we're gonna get back on the road. Everything should be good to go here. We're getting pretty close to 6,000 feet here, almost to the. Elko, Nevada area. Headed to uh, Idaho.
tonight we are staying at Cactus Pete's Casino, uh, right on the corner, uh, the border of Nevada and Idaho. We're like, I think we're less than a mile from the border of Idaho. We made it a little over 300 and something miles, or 400 miles today. Um, when I got here to the casino, we had the generator running most of the day today, and uh, I shut it off about an hour ago because you know it's getting dark and it was getting cooler. We didn't need the air conditioning anymore. So when I got here, I started the generator. I started fine. As soon as I put a load on it, it would die. Um, I tried it twice. I was like, well, that's not right. So I came out and I checked the oil on it. It was a little bit low on oil. Uh, I put about a quart in it, but that thing holds like two and a half gallons. So that's really not enough to trigger the low oil alarm. Uh, but I, I tried that, started it, put a load on it, and it died. Uh, and then I realized that the altitude adjustment was set to sea level and we're at 5,000 feet. So I thought, well, maybe that could be it, but I didn't think so because we've been running all day. Uh, but I made the altitude adjustment to 5,000 feet, which we're a little over 5,000 right now, and put a load on it and it died. So I pulled the spark plugs out. If you remember, I got this generator for free. Uh, I had been in the shop three times in the previous year for the previous owner and uh, they finally gave up on it. They said they didn't want any more, they got something new. This is a gas 6.5 uh, commercial RV uh, Onan generator. Um, but when I got it, all I did to it was clean the plugs on it and then it was fine. It's worked for me ever since. I did eventually replace those plugs. Uh, I pulled the plugs out again just to inspect them and they were a little bit fouled, but not, not terribly. So I went ahead and cleaned them out since I had them out. Uh, and so then my next guess was fuel. I pulled off the fuel filter and no fuel would drain out of it backwards, but it was full to the top on the inside. Uh, I do not have a spare fuel filter. I just kind of blew through it uh, with my mouth and it ejected some shit out of it and then uh, then the fuel ran out of it. So uh, I put the fuel filter back on, started it up, put a load on it, it's running fine. Uh, so I'm going to need to get a new fuel filter for it. It's a tiny little Onan specific little metal canister that's really about the size of your thumb. Uh, I have some of the little ones, like uh, they go on like a lawnmower, like the plastic ones. I have some of those with me, but this Onan one, you know, it goes onto a flare fitting. Uh, so maybe I'll add one of those other ones into the line. But I, as soon as I get a chance, I'm going to get the Onan. But uh, it's working fine now. We're going to have our dinner here tonight. Uh, we've got some good internet here. And since I had such a lucky month, I'm trying to talk my wife into letting me go into the casino and and uh, spend like 20 bucks or something. So we'll, we'll see. Uh, but everything was going great on the bus. There's a few oil drips back under there again right now. Uh, but I had those uh, pig mats that were zip tied up under there. And I think that that's just because that one was really saturated today. And I think that's what's just, uh, I need to take those off and change it. And I'll know for sure. But it's definitely greatly improved over the oil leak that we had earlier, if it is. Um, there's a couple quarter size uh, drips that are under there right now. Uh, and considering that earlier it looked like somebody just spilled a cup of coffee of oil on there. Uh, so anyways, uh, we're almost to Idaho and tomorrow we're going to be uh, working on a bus in Idaho. Uh, we got about three hours to our destination, um, so somewhere around there, three, three and a half maybe. Um, uh, Ter Terraton, Idaho, that's where we're going to be at. So You can see how the bus is a little dirty, but it doesn't look terrible. I don't want it to rain hopefully before I get it washed. I'm going to wash it in vinegar. Vinegar neutralizes the acidic properties I think of the the playa dust maybe I don't know unless or is vinegar just a good cleaner for us somebody told me to use vinegar so I would I would have assumed like baking soda or something like that but uh, we'll, we'll just do vinegar on it and uh, I did take a air compressor and a blowgun to it earlier and uh, clean the radiator and all that kind of stuff got all that out of there I actually did the engine before we left the playa but then all that idling out of there at five ten miles an hour uh, it really made it dirty but uh, the bus is running great. It's more powerful than ever at altitude. Uh, the adjustments that Joe did or had us do when we did the timing on it, we advanced the timing to 1.455 instead of 1.460. Uh, and then by setting the injector protrusions, so now that the injectors actually spray into just the cup part of the piston instead of over the entire top of the piston, I think that's what's given me a little bit more of that power. It was climbing hills like crazy today. Uh, anyways, it, it just did great. It did. I had full top speed at altitude, which I did not have that before. I used to lose two or three miles an hour at altitude. Uh, keeping it cool was the only issue today because it was such a hot day, uh, you know, and I was trying to hot dog it and at some point I was up to 72 mile an hour in it because it, it just wants to go. 
uh, he did set the governor's speed a little higher than what we had it before too. And I, I, again, I'm not responsible enough to <laughs> to manage my speed. Uh, it's really hard to do. So, anyways, uh, enjoy this, and uh, I'll give you an update later. And if I win big at the casino tonight, I will let you know.